Alright, and welcome back to my Zelda 2 Adventure of Link guided walkthrough on how to get through the game with life and magic at level 1. In the previous episodes we did the first two palaces and now it's time to acquire the hammer and another magic container. And to do this we need to make our way through Death Mountain, south of the river town of Saria. This can be a quite difficult section because it's rather lengthy and because the entire area is a maze. So the most important thing is to first be aware of what the correct route is. Fortunately the route is very easy to remember. Start by going right and the only other time that you get to choose between two caves, choose the right cave again. At any other time you don't even have to make a choice and at no point do you have to take an elevator up or down. If you do this you will get to the final cave where the hammer can be found at the very end. So it is still a tough and lengthy section, but the main reason that this area is so difficult on your first playthrough is because you have no idea where to go. So that doesn't have to be a problem this time. However, we are at level 1 as far as magic and life is concerned, so you can't exactly take that many hits. So the only benefit we do have, other than knowing the correct route, is having a strong offense. At this point your sword should be at level 5 or 6, and the ability to quickly dispose of enemies makes it less likely that you take hits. Regardless, there are definitely some annoying enemies in this area. Like the boomerang throwing enemies and those guys wielding axes. As I said in the previous episode, the best way to deal with the boomerang enemies is to kill them as quickly as you can and then turn around to block the returning boomerangs. However, if there is enough space above you, you can also choose to jump rather than block. The axe wielding enemies can more or less be approached like the knights, jumping attacks are the most effective. However, keep in mind that the red versions can throw their axe as well. And those cannot be blocked with your shield, you will have to jump over them. The reason I ignored that red potion is because you need the jump spell to get it. So whatever I do, I cannot use the life spell without sacrificing a large chunk of my magic bar. And speaking of potions, in principle you can look for respawning enemies to farm potions when you are low on life. But that can be time consuming and for all you know, you might get killed when you are farming. Only do it when you are really desperate for a potion. Okay, well this just really sucks. There's no way to hit him from here and if I try to jump over him, either a bat will hit me or he will simply turn around and that will cause me to jump on top of him. That's another reason Death Mountain is tough, because at this point you don't have the down thrust and the up thrust yet. Once you have those abilities, there are easier ways to deal with a whole variety of enemies. And this sucks again. I said before that one of the difficulties of this game is the fact that your sword has such a short reach. It's in fact shorter than this enemy's reach. So basically you have to time your jump attacks in between his attacks, which is really tricky to do. Yeah, same thing here. What I should have done is to simply not let him reach that corner. In fact, I could have exited the cave and try again. By the way, I believe I said this back in episode 1, but you can do a sort of slide attack. You have a tiny bit of momentum when you duck and attack when running, and that can be just enough to hit your enemy before he can hit you. But again, this is a rather tricky technique.
Alright, we made it to the final cave, but we are still not actually all that close to the hammer. As this cave is rather large, and this time when you encounter an elevator, you do need to take it down. And if you then continue onward to the right, you will eventually encounter the hammer. Now it may be tempting to make use of the fact that you can keep an item after you acquired it. And simply let yourself die until you get a game over to get back to the start of the game. However, you will have to make it back out of this cave to break the boulder next to it. Because there you will find the second magic container. And let me emphasize this again. In order to beat the game with magic at level 1, all 4 magic containers are an absolute necessity. The game is literally unbeatable if you don't have enough magic points to use the thunder and reflect spell later on. Alright, and there's the hammer. Very important item as it allows for shortcuts and access to previously inaccessible caves. You even needed to find the hidden town in southeast Hyrule where the final magic container and the magic key can be found. And I still have all my lives left, although I'm close to dying. However, not all enemies respawn as you know, so even losing this life is not a big loss at this point. By the way, the fireballs from these devils cannot be blocked with your shield. There is no clear rule as to what you can and cannot block. You simply have to know or learn through trial and error, I'm afraid. Okay then, back to the start. And the hammer immediately gives us access to the second heart container, in the cave to the right. Just like there is no clear rule as to what you can and cannot block, there is also no way to tell what enemies can and cannot be harmed with your energy shot from your sword, when you have a full life bar. Well, in a way there is. If it is an enemy you would want to be able to kill that way, he is probably immune to it. There's another blocked cave in the west where you will find the sacred water. This is required to get the fairy spell in the next town. This is not optional. The fairy spell is another necessary spell in order to make it through the game. Okay, so now let's make our way to the next town where we will both acquire the fairy spell as well as the down thrust. Both are required for the next palace. And in the next palace we will find the raft which is required to make it to the other side of the sea, to the right here. But first let's go and heal a sick kid using the sacred water. All 
Alright, when you reach the church, use the jump spell to get on the roof. Inside you will find a soldier who will teach you the down thrust attack. At this house, an old woman will come out who has a sick child. The sacred water is the cure. And she locked me out. That stupid bitch! If I didn't need to become a fairy, I would just let your child die. You know, that's what you get for being a hero. In the end, no one is even thankful. I guess the world simply isn't worth saving in the first place. Okay then, now we're finally ready to go to the next palace. Now pay close attention to how I move here, because you don't want to lose a life before even getting to the palace. And the encounters in the graveyard are really annoying, but they can be completely avoided as you will see. When you fall down, immediately do the newly learned down thrust attack, because you will land right on top of an enemy. And unfortunately, you will have to drain your magic bar immediately after that by using the fairy spell. However, at the start of the palace, you can refill your magic bar by hitting the statue in front of the palace. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, that can happen sometimes. Usually the statue will just drop a red potion, but if you have bad RNG, the statue will actually come to life, and the red potion will only appear after you kill it. Okay, this is an important trick to be aware of. Keep pressing select after you get the red potion, so that you will immediately use the life spell when the magic bar is filling up. Because the red potion gives you more magic back than you even have with a completely filled bar at this point. So this way your magic bar will continue to refill after using the life spell. If you don't do this, your magic bar will be almost completely empty. But using this trick, you will have a lot more left. By the way, given that we no longer have to worry about experience points, enemies can simply be avoided. And the down thrust attack can be really helpful when jumping over enemies, as you can just let yourself bounce off. Also, some enemies are easier to kill with the down thrust attack to begin with. But you have to be careful of course when there are breakable blocks beneath you. In this room just keep running. Neither the floating eye nor the blocks should hit you, as long as you keep moving without hesitation. Thank <laughs> you. 
what the hell? I could kill the first one with the energy from my sword, but the second one I cannot. Well, isn't that consistent? <laughs> anyway, after this you need to jump to the other side and make sure to jump at the last possible moment. If you jump too early, there is no way back without wasting magic on the jump spell. And you absolutely need to go right because there is a key over there. By the way, the down thrust attack doesn't work on all enemies. For example, knights cannot be killed from above. Which is strange because jump attacks do work as you should know by now. But especially if you use a down thrust on an enemy that's immune to it, who is against a wall or obstacle, you can actually get yourself stuck. Okay, here we have flying heads that shoot blockable projectiles. Regardless, they are really annoying when they come from both sides. It's best not to move too far to the left if they come from the right, because that can trigger them to come from the left. So, when possible, try to keep them on one side. Over here, make sure to first kill the knight before getting the key. If you get hit while standing on this block, you will fall down into the lava, and that's of course a one hit kill. Also, be careful with the down thrust attack. You don't want to bounce into the lava after using it to kill an enemy. Alright, now we encounter one of the harder enemies in the game, the blue knights. They are similar to the red ones, but they are also constantly throwing swords, which can be blocked but you need to do that when still trying to do jump attacks. And they can also throw them low to the ground, so that you have to crouch the block. And over here we find the raft. In the next episode we will finish the palace, and then use the raft to get to East Hyrule. Stay tuned for part 4.